Until we understand the truth of our history, every effort at repair will fail. Most people ask the question, do you support reparations, don't know what the word means. They think it's some check. There is no sufficient check you can put in the mail. It means something much more dynamic, much more inclusive, and much more substantial. After apartheid in South Africa, there was a recognition that they couldn't get to a healthy place without a commitment to truth and reconciliation. There were convenings for people who had been victimized by apartheid and discouraged and traumatized by that bigotry could have place to give voice to it. If you go to Johannesburg today, their constitutional court is surrounded by the emblems, the monuments, the symbols, that are designed to make sure no one forgets the inequality of apartheid. In Rwanda, there was a recognition that the country couldn't recover from that horrific genocide without a process of truth and reconciliation, truth and repair, truth and justice. And you can't spend a day in Rwanda without people talking to you about the genocide. It's urgent to them that everyone understand what happened there. In Germany, you can't go 200 meters without seeing markers or monuments or stones that have been placed next to the homes of Jewish families that were abducted during the Holocaust. The Germans actually want you to go to the Holocaust Memorial. They're trying to change the narrative. There are no Adolf Hitler statues in Germany. Swastikas have been banned. There's a consciousness uh, to never again fall prey to the politics of fear and anger that gave rise to that Holocaust. In this country, we don't talk about slavery. We don't talk about the native genocide. We don't talk about lynching. We don't talk about segregation. You start talking about race and people get nervous. You start talking about racial justice and people are looking for exits. Our landscape is littered with iconography designed to romanticize the period of enslavement, to celebrate and honor the architects and defenders of slavery. People get very, very uncomfortable when you start talking about how we begin to deconstruct of this legacy of bias and segregation. We talk about transitional justice in other places in the world. The State Department is even funded to assist in those efforts in Europe, in Asia, in Africa, but we've never done it in this country. And I think the time is now. In law school, you're taught if someone's rights are violated, there have to be remedies. And the remedies are shaped by the nature of the violation, which is understanding what the motives are, what the intent was, what's the extent of the injury is central to what kind of remedy you impose. And I think we have too many people in this country who want to talk about uh, truth and repair or truth and reconciliation and truth and justice. And they want to skip the truth part and jump right to the reparation or reconciliation part. I don't think it works that way. It's the truth part that's actually the hard part. When we all have a consciousness of the truth, the repair part actually becomes so much easier. So I'm resistant to any effort to reduce the project in front of us to something that allows us to skip the truth. Most people in this country know nothing about what happened to African Americans in the first half of the 20th century when six million fled the American South as refugees and exiles. Most of us know nothing about the brutality of the domestic slave trade and the way thousands of African American families were pulled apart, where women were brutalized and raped, where men were reduced to objects, where children were sold away from their parents. And until we know those details, we can't appreciate what kind of remedy, what kind of repair is needed. I go into courts and jails and my clients who've been convicted of crimes to be released have to go before a parole board typically and they have to acknowledge the wrongfulness of their crime. And they do that because the parole board won't let them out if they still distrust them to acknowledge the wrongfulness of what they do. They don't trust people who aren't prepared to express remorse and regret. My clients need to do that to understand that wrongfulness so that they won't reoffend. I think the same is true for this nation. I think we have to articulate the wrong that was done. We have to express remorse and regret. We have to feel some of the shame that we should feel about this history of racial inequality. I want an era of truth and reconciliation in this country, truth and justice, truth and repair. I want to see what happened in South Africa and Rwanda and Germany happen here. I want the landscape to change. I want the iconography to change. I want all of these totems to the Confederacy and these false narratives to end. I want us to stop tolerating bigotry and bias in the workplace and the school place. I want something fundamental to happen. And then I want to experience something that feels more like freedom and equality and justice than we have experienced in this country today.